Hi, I'm Dave Taddeo, and this is Coders Tech Interviews. It's Friday, November 14th, 2014, and today I'm talking to Gordon King of Ultimate Index. How you doing, Gordon? I'm doing well. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. Um, and you're the owner at Ultimate Index? Yes, I am. Okay, what do you guys do there? Uh, how long have you been doing what you're doing? We manufacture pre-melted evaporation materials to fit into our customers' crucible pockets. And what exactly are you manufacturing? You're, you're making uh, cones or pucks or uh, different materials. You're, you're pre-melting those for uh, your customers' equipment, is that right? Yes, Dave. We pre-melt these materials into all different shapes, uh, including cones and pucks, uh, to fit perfectly into our customers' crucible pocket. It's so their pocket that's weight-free and has no centered material, and it's completely dense, melted form. Oh, okay, and what kind of materials are you talking about? Uh, oxides, fluorides? Give us a call. Uh, predominantly, uh, the all the oxide families is what we started with. It would seem to be the most uh, people had the most difficulty with. Um, that rolled over into some fluorides also. Um, this all started off with some R&D work I did at Coherent. Uh, many years ago before I started this business. I've worked in the uh, R&D group uh, working in particular with hafnium oxide is how we got started. I got started doing this noting all the difficulties and the issues, process control issues you have with evaporating hafnium oxide. Right, and hafnium oxide is a tough one. Um, if you just give me a moment, I'm going to share my screen. I want to show your website for a moment. And in particular, the hafnium oxide. I know that uh, um, I've done some work uh, pre-melting hafnium oxide, and uh, it's not easy to do. Oh, right here on your on our screen here, we can see the hafnium oxide, and um, it's really really dense. Uh, I can see that there's no uh, voids, there's no pockets in there, and ultimately that's what you're going for, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, our customers, their equipment is designed to evaporate these materials, not to melt these materials so much. Although that doesn't go to say that they can't melt the material, but it is very difficult for a production evaporator to melt uh, a solid dense form like this. Right. And so the advantages of having a, a solid puck like that, um, just kind of give us a couple of those advantages and, and why a customer or why somebody would want that. Well, there's a whole list of advantages. Uh, I believe probably one of the most important advantages is you're not having a melted centered material down below or potentially you have a, a fairly well melted form but there could be voids there. Um, our equipment was uh, with the cooperation of a gum manufacturer that worked with me. We designed our equipment specifically to melt these solid forms and not as in a production machine that's designed for evaporation. Uh, when you have these problems of having a melted form on top and potential voids underneath that, you have the potential for spitting, uh, which causes scatter on the substrates. You have potential for a change in stoichiometry from the melted material to the centered material. That could cause issues for design engineers. You also have the problems associated with tunneling, in particular on hafnium oxide, which causes a whole list of process control issues. Uh, starting off with, with the tunneling, you could have issues of getting down to the centered material and causing spitting. Um, you have the tunneling could also cause issues with your cloud shape of your, your evaporation cloud shape, which causes distribution issues, which could be uh, misunderstood in a uh, it could be misunderstood in a design model when an engineer looks at a problem that he had with a coding run in regards to spectral uh, problems and they could be fooled into thinking they have other issues when it's truly an issue with 
uh, distribution based on the tunneling. Right, and uh, just to, I want to talk about a couple of quick points you made there, um, especially one of them, the uh, if if you're not pre-melting a material like uh, hafnium oxide or uh, zirconium oxide, where you get that tunneling into the pills that are provided by the uh, material manufacturer, you really will change your your cloud shape, your uh, evaporation plume. And exactly like you said, you, you, you can run into a lot of uh, problems like that, especially with um, distribution, um, stoichiometry, and so on. I just want to show really quickly, I'm going to share my screen again, um, a picture of a material that is not um, properly pre-melted. And this is uh, uh, an article that I put on my website. And here's some uh, tantalum oxide. And you can, this is exactly what you're talking about, isn't it? It's these not properly pre-melted into a, a nice puck, like you can see on your hafnium oxide. And this is where that, that tunneling comes into, into place, where you can get some spitting. You can have evaporation happening underneath the actual top part, you know, the flat top part there, and get the, that spitting and, and those explosions that you're talking about. Is that correct? Yes, it is, Dave. Uh, a very common issue with uh, uh, just about anybody that does evaporate, e-beam evaporation. Right, right, and that's interesting. And it goes to uh, stoichiometry as well. Um, when you're melting a material, um, you have that uh, change in your source material because there's dissociation at the source. And so, uh, Coatings like laser uh, coatings and ophthalmic coatings especially, um, when you don't change out your material often enough, you're going to get those changes in uh, response, in spectral uh, response uh, when the coating is done. Uh, one more quick question. I, you, know, you, you said you did some work with manufacturers, so you're constantly doing R&D at uh, Ultimate Index? Yes, yes, we are, Dave. Uh, this has been a continuous uh, improvement uh, project from day one. Um, uh, starting off with, I had a coating e-gun ma or an e-gun manufacturer work with me uh, in regards to designing an electron beam gun that its purpose was more directed towards melting the material as opposed to evaporation. Um, I know that may sound a little bit. Uh, funny, but it, it is very difficult to have use a production coating machine to melt materials specifically as opposed to evaporate them. Uh, again, this coating or this e-gun manufacturer worked with me on this and we were able to develop an e-gun that did this very efficiently. This e-gun manufacturer worked with me on this project to specifically melt materials in a solid dense form. As we all know, it's very difficult to do that in a production coating machine that is designed to evaporate these materials. Yeah, I can speak to that myself. Uh, over my career, I've, I've spent a lot of time and uh, energy uh, melting materials, things like hafnium and things like uh, titanium oxide. And it, it's very time consuming. It dirties up the chamber. Uh, it requires a lot of cleaning and a lot of manual labor. And uh, if, you know, if you were around when I, when I could have had you to do that for me, it would have saved me a lot of time, it would have saved me a lot of money, and a lot of hassle. And I, I can imagine, the, uh, like you just said, the, the wear and tear on a gun uh, when you're pumping up powers to melt and pre-melt material rather than just uh, evaporating materials. Uh, one of the Absolutely. Things we... Go ahead. Oh, absolutely, Dave. Uh, this is the difficult. These are some of the list of difficulties that our customers have in trying to uh, melt materials as opposed to evaporate materials in production systems. You know, we have our time is very valuable in a production machine, and to spend this amount of time that you have to spend to pre-melt these materials when you could be producing product, and also the issues with in the process of pre-melting these materials, you're dirtying up your machine and which also leads to more frequent cleanings and we know that takes a, a huge amount of time to do that also. So taking all those time consumers out and eliminating the process control issues of a poorly pre-melted material can be very valuable um, to the testimony of my customers. That's true. 
Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, that I noticed on your site, you are a distributor for EMD Millipore. Yes, we are. And um, how long have you been doing that? We've been distributing EMD Millipore products for within the first year of starting a business, so about 10 years. Oh, excellent. Um, you know, one of the things I like about EMD myself is uh, their experience in manufacturing materials, coding materials. They've been around such a long, long time. And uh, usually when a customer asks me to recommend a material manufacturer, um, I recommend uh, EMD because I know they've got that experience. They've, uh, they've been around so long. They're uh, testing equipment and so on and so forth. The quality is, is just top notch. I agree with you entirely on those points, Dave. I worked with the EMD product going back uh, 20 years prior to starting this business at uh, Coherent. And also, I worked with many other uh, material uh, manufacturers in the EMD department trying to solve uh, problems that we had believed that were material problems, but they were actually process control issues. And then when we discovered that there was quality issues with some of these other material manufacturers, we ended up going back to the EMD product. Um, I am familiar with the EMD Merck manufacturing facility, and I do know that they have the latest available test and measuring uh, metrology equipment available today. Um, I, their product is, in my opinion, one of the most consistent, highest quality evaporation material products available today. And so those are the kinds of things that you're talking about and uh, the kinds of uh, services you provide for your customers. Um, what other kind of materials do you deal with? We deal with uh, a whole range of the oxide materials in particular. That was when the, where we first started the business. That was the big focus. And we saw that there was some value and our customers uh, felt there was some uh, value in uh, doing pre-melts and some, a lot of the fluorides that they have difficulties with. Um, anything that you have an issue with going from a melted form to a center form and the potential of voids. And also one, a big issue that uh, my customers find that this helps them with is their starting point of the stoichiometry of the material. Um, in particular, titanium oxide. Titanium oxide has a uh, fairly dramatic uh, stoichiometry slash index change as it's being melted slash evaporated. Um, our customers found that they, from technician to technician, from day to day, uh, depending on how well it was melted, they'd have a different starting point in the stoichiometry uh, of the material to the end of the coating run and they weren't able to control that specific starting index slash stoichiometry from run to run. Where with our processes we've developed here to melt the material in a specific amount of time with a specific amount of material and a specific amount of power that they have the same index starting point and they can count on that index being the same starting point and they could model it to the end because of the same starting point. Not to mention the, the minimizing of spitting and the minimizing of the potential of going into it and all those other issues that happen with the poorly pre-melted material. Right. And you know, I, I in the business that I do, um, I go into uh, several ophthalmic labs and a lot of ophthalmic labs and uh, AR coatings for eyeglasses uh, use titanium oxide and typically that material is set up just like you said right at the beginning um, you know after a, a big clean or a, after uh, um, some maintenance being done but uh, most of the time it's just material being added to the top and you lose that uh, stoichiometry uh, you lose that uh, index um, reliability in the coatings and uh, I always mention to them that they, they should be pre that material. Unfortunately, I don't think that they do uh, because there's always, uh, you know, a rush for uh, pro production schedules and so on. And so I find that, uh, you know, probably the ophthalmics industry could really, really use, uh, you know, your product. Yeah, we, we seem to be getting more interest in the ophthalmic world, uh, in particular as of late, 
Uh, I don't know how why that's happening, but there seems to be a lot more interest uh, lately, and this is something we're uh, getting a lot more involved with. Um, they seem to be limited uh, in their uh, understanding of thin film coating. Their business is eyewear. Um, they're not in the business of precision uh, thin film coating, so that they're not. It's not emphasized to them the importance of the starter source material. Uh, in regards to the potential for spitting, stoichiometry change, index change, uh, based on them just adding material haphazardly um, and not or not having a solid melt through their uh, starter source. Right, and uh, I know that in my experience watching that, uh, you know, sometimes that can change color because in the ophthalmics business, um, color point. Typically, it's a, a, a light green or a light blue, and if your index is off slightly, um, you're going to change that color slightly, and uh, most of the time, that's not where um, the troubleshooting is focused. Is uh, it's, it's not focused on the, the just the adding of material, your starter point. What other kinds of materials do you work with? Uh, do you do, do any kinds of fluorides or any of those uh, materials that typically uh, you find that uh, sublime rather than evaporate? Absolutely. Uh, we work with uh, all the fluorides, and again, this is another one that seems to be a very strong interest, a growing interest in. Um, uh, the uh, potential with the fluorides is that this, uh, this, this, the disassociation of the, the fluorine from the base material, um, that's always a potential issue. And also you have the, the potential issues of the material uh, having spitting issues because they start off with the raw uh, pieces of material and just load their crucible pocket that way and that could cause spitting uh, reaction to the e-beam as opposed to having a melted uh, solid form in their crucible pocket. Right, and I can imagine, uh, you know, if you have your flooring coming off your base uh, metal, it's not something you can just add into the chamber like you can with oxygen. Uh, you can't just uh, you know, bleed fluorine back in there. This is very true. Uh, the, uh, the, my customers, as of recent, they're showing this interest or, or uh, very excited about being able to melt from it, or evaporate from a melted form as opposed to the granular form. It seems to be helping with a lot of the issues that they've been dealing with for a long time. Okay. Uh, thanks for talking to me today, Gordon, and uh, is there anything else you want to talk about before we sign off? No, thank you very much, Dave, for the opportunity to do this interview with you, and I uh, can't say uh, thank you enough for this opportunity. Okay. Well, thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you soon.